How do you fundraise? Well, uh, it depends what you're fundraising for, but we're talking about the theater. You, first of all, you have to have a board that is not only supportive of what you want to do, but has connections to money. So you divide your board between people who know theater so that they will support what you want to do, people who uh, have connection with money, and people who have some connection uh, with power. And so you very carefully ask one, then that one will ask another one. So eventually board people ask other board people. Uh, you have to start with someone. So <clears throat> I started with Joan Chalmers because we knew Floyd and Jean. Floyd was uh, uh, on the opera board and we used to go to hockey games with them and we really were good friends. And Joan Chalmers, their daughter, was good friends with Dodie Robb and Pat Patterson who had written some shows for me to take into the right. into school. So Joan was willing and was connected uh, to uh, power, to money, and loved the theater, the arts. So she was my first board member. Then uh, uh, John Elder, who was a lawyer, came on. We, had, we knew each other socially. And then they brought the other board members on, always with the understanding that we needed one-third people who loved and knew the arts, one-third money, and one-third power of some kind. And then that's how you start. And then uh, different board members go for different money. Right. And the power opens your doors to the arts councils and so on. And the people who are in the theater get involved also in fundraising. Everybody has to fundraise somehow. And do you, Susan, go along on these meetings mm -hmm. to power? Mm -hmm. You go to everything because you have to do most of the talking. And when you do the talking to the bank president or the political person, how, how, do, you, how do you decide the right way to go at it? Well, first of all, you, you uh, uh, send briefs to them first. Hopefully, they will read a little so that they'll have some, but every once in a while, you go and you say, did you by any chance have a chance to read? And I would say 50% of the time they say no. So then you have to talk what's in the brief. Uh, it's very important before you go to see people to find out something about them. So let's say the bank, and I went to the Royal Bank, and uh, so we chatted a little bit, and uh, I asked him how old the children were, and uh, told him what kind of things we're doing for that age children, and um, that uh, we're mostly in, I try mostly to be in schools that are in poor neighborhoods, because those children would unlikely be ever able to go to the theater or ballet or, op or opera, whereas children like him hopefully get a chance to go to the ballet and, and opera. Unfortunately, we don't have a theater where they can go to. And would he not think that it's important for children to also have a theater? that's devoted to them. It's it, not possible for him to say no, right? Interesting phrase, it's not possible for him to say no. <laughs> so, 
That's, but you always have to go to whoever you go to for money and try and find out something about them that would make them uh, look favorably to giving you money. Right. And so the discussion is not the same always, but a lot of it is the same because it's a theater, it's going to do this, that, and what, what all are you going to do in that theater? How is it all going to be used? What kinds of people will be possible, for example? Uh, we always had children pay children's price, but grandparents pay half. Parents pay the full because we were anxious for grandparents to come with the children because we thought that it's more likely that they would bring them more often than the parents who were busy. And in terms of being a woman, uh, if we're talking the, the, the 1960s and early 70s, women in the theater and women were not in that many positions of power, influence, or driving policy. Did you find that an advantage or disadvantage uh, as a woman? It depends on how you play it. You have to be an actress. <laughs> well, because for some, uh, to play on the fact that you're, a, at that time, an attractive woman wouldn't go down well, but with some it would go down well. So you, you just have to know who you're talking to. You really do it. And you read that in the room as you sit there? Yeah. Well, also because you know a lot about the background. Right. That's the biggest job you have to do, to find out what they're interested in, where they're coming from, who they have, what they do. Sports were always interesting. If they were tennis players or golfers or skiers, you try and bring that into the conversation a little bit to make them be able to talk. Right. So right. if you come out, you can't make them talk about being a banker or being an architect, or, but you can get them to be able to talk about something you know they're interested in or do. So it's important, while you giving your spiel, that you also give them a chance to talk or ask questions. It's not easy. No. I mean. <laughs> and it has to be done till the end of time. It does. From the Medici's to Leonardo da Vinci, <laughs> through Susan Rubbish, to it's got to be done to the end yeah. of time. And how yeah. do the arts persuade the corporate yeah. and the commercial yeah. sector to actually help create a robust arts But even arts when community? you go to uh, arts councils, whose job it is to give you money, it's not easy. And is it a different approach for arts councils? Yes, so the Arts Council, it's primarily how many people will be involved, how many jobs will there be, how much money do you really need, uh, how else, how, how well are you fundraising. It's different, but uh, it's not easy either. And in these conversations, does passion or uh, creativity ever enter into it? You're, you're With talking the Arts Councils? Not really, because they figure you have to be pretty passionate. Right. In my case, it was always easier because I was making $35 a week. And only at the very end, after the theater opened, was I making $75 a week. Well, that's So <laughs> they knew it was mostly passion. It right. certainly wasn't money. Right. I remember when I left and uh, and Peter came on, uh, <clears throat> um, he said, well, uh, I need an administrator. And uh, uh, June Faulkner became the administrator, so there were two people doing my job yep. because I was a producer. It's a totally different, uh, yep. different thing. Why did and you never direct? Because when I was a producer and I said I would never act or direct in the theater. Why? Because I felt that it gave me a better chance to pick things that I thought were right for the theater and right for the kids and pick the directors. 
Right. Uh, that's, that's, I think, the difference when you have an artistic director who mainly wants to do things, or she, that she wants to do. So it has a different, uh, a different approach. Um, I think Peter did mostly things he wanted to do and directed everything, yep. and yep. June ran the theater. Yep. And there was big fundraising because there were two big salaries yep. against uh, practically a non-salaried person. I want to talk a bit for, about theater for young audiences itself. Uh, because some people say, well, it's, you know, it's kid stuff, it's uh, fairy tale, story time. Uh, but it obviously has a much deeper root in need, uh, the art, for young people. Well, um, in the theater, you have to do things that are more for a family, because you might have a four-year-old and a 12-year-old, and you're going, and you've got some adults. So it's a different different material than the material you do in schools. In the schools, what's wonderful is that you, you uh, 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 have writers that are writing specifically for an age group. And I think the most exciting things that we did were for age groups. Uh, and, and, and writers enjoyed writing specifically for a kind of a age group and what they may be interested in. And uh, uh, I think I had 68 different scripts for the different schools. So there were 68 different writers. Wow. It was, it was wonderful. Uh, one of the most exciting things I think we did was uh, I asked Rick Salutin to write a play for high schools. And he wrote a most wonderful play called Money. And it was all about how money came to be, how money is being used, what money means. It was just a wonderful one. And, and, and the kids liked it. With, in high school, the teachers liked it. And they did work after with children. He never wrote another play for me, though. Also true with Lake Nadia, but there you go. <laughs> um.